Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. We're back, and this is the AP Physics C Calculus Mechanics, and it's the 2017 exam number one. And so uh, we're going to go, sorry, number two, number two. And so let's take a look at what this problem looks like. Uh, we have a box mass M. It's at the top of a height H, inclined plane. It's smooth. There's no friction. It's going to come down, hit a spring. You can see what's happening. We got potential to kinetic. We got potential kinetic to potential of the spring. We're going to express all our answers in our variables. So this is a variable type problem. We're going to, our variables, M, K, M, H, K, physical constants, and all those different things. So, of course, what's the first question they're going to ask me is, what is the speed at the box down here? Okay, well, we have our gravitational potential energy, and it's equal to our kinetic energy, which means our M, G, H is equal to 1 half M, V squared, which leaves us with the velocity is going to be the square root of 2 G, H, square root of 2 G, H. And so uh, that is worth two points, believe it or not. One point for understanding potential to kinetic, one point for your answer right there. So we got two points for your letter A1. Uh, letter A2, I actually think should be given two points, not one point. Um, I think A1 should just be given one point, but they don't. Uh, they want to know, is the speed when the box is right here, halfway down, is the speed uh, uh, halfway down the incline greater than, less than, or equal to one half of the speed at the bottom of the incline? Well, we know at the bottom of the incline, we know velocity equals root 2gh. So that what's one half? Uh, that's, this is half at the bottom. We'll keep these two separate. We have half at the bottom. That's our equation for that one. Our other equation is going to be velocity equals one half sorry, not one half, root 2gh, but it's going to be root 2g one half of h, and that is halfway down, halfway down, okay? And if we take a look here, we're, this is just going to be equal to root gh, and this guy is going to be equal to one half root 2gh, and so obviously the answer is it is greater than. It is greater than. Uh, because this guy, if you just put in some numbers, it will show the root gh is going to be greater than 1 half root 2gh right there. And that uh, is going to be worth one point for saying greater than with the justification. So a 1 and 2 together are worth three points. Now, of course, what we said is we're going to derive an expression for the maximum compression of the spring, which means we go from uh, kinetic energy to the spring potential energy. We have 1 half mv squared, and that equals um, 1 half k delta x squared, and that delta x is the maximum compression of the spring. We do a little bit of algebra, and you can see your delta x is equal to the square root of 2m. G H, okay, two M G H over K. Okay. You could have said the square root of two V squared over K, but we can't use V, so we're going to use our e equivalence from A one, and that is going to be worth one point for that guy. Uh, let's go to letter C. Letter C is uh, determine the expression for the time when the block collides with the spring to when the spring reaches its maximum com compression. So you can see how this is actually going to be um, a quarter of the period. So the time is equal to the quarter of the period. What do we know about a period of this spring? It's going to be equal to 2 pi square root m over k. And you can see right here is that leaves us with pi over 2 root m over k. And so that was worth two points, believe it or not. Uh, one, one point for indicating a simple harmonic approach right here. So one point for this relationship here. One point for your final answer for two points for C. Now we get on to the good part of the problem. The, 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 
the awesome calculus part of the problem. It says the block again is released from rest, but now it reaches a horizontal surface moon with V naught. It suppose it experiences resistive forces, and we have an equation right here for force equals uh, beta velocity squared, and beta is a positive constant with the units of kilograms per meter, and we want to do right, but do not solve a differential equation. You gotta know how to do a differential equation. It's really, really, really easy is, we know that the force, the net force, is equal to mass times acceleration, isn't it? And what is the force that is working on this? Is that resistance force, that's negative BV squared. And what do we know about my acceleration? It's dv over dt, and that equals negative beta velocity squared. And that is going to be worth, believe it or not, three points. Three points. Uh, one point for applying Newton's second law. Uh, one point for indicating that that net force is in the negative direction, believe it or not. And one point for finishing up with my differential equation that I don't have to solve. Now, they asked me to solve this differential equation. No problemo. We need to get the velocity on one side, the time on the other side, so we're gonna divide over here. We have one over V squared dV, and that equals negative beta over M dt. Um, I am going to clean this up a little bit and call this velocity to negative two dV equals negative beta over m dt, and this is primed and ready to do what? To integrate. And so we're going from zero to time t, we're going from v naught to v final. They already gave me the answer, I just gotta get there. And so I'm gonna integrate negative v to the negative two, so, sorry, v to the negative two, so it, the integral of that would be negative v to the negative one, or one over v and we're going from v final to v initial. What happens with the integral of negative b over m with respect to t? Well, that's gonna be negative beta t over m, and we're gonna go from zero to t there. So what do we have here? We have one over v final, negative one over v final, minus negative one over v initial equals negative beta t over m, I clean this up, I get this v final on this side, I get one over v final equals v initial plus beta t over m, and there's my exactly what they wanted me to get right there, and that is worth three points, three points. Uh, one point for correctly separating the variables, one point for the integration, and one point for using the limits and getting your answer right there. So, one point for separating your variables correctly, right there. One point for your integration, right there. One point for cleaning that bad boy up, applying your um, limits of integration. So, D was worth six total points, three for number one and three for number two, and that is where we really get to the crux of the problem. Now, I want you to see what happens here, is you can see this equation is one over V final equals one over V initial plus beta T over M. We have one over V final equals one over V initial plus beta T over M. That is my velocity function for that. And so you can see, as the time gets greater and greater and greater and greater, the velocity is gonna get less and less and less and less. So that velocity starts up there and it's going to curl down like this and asymptote at zero right there. And so remember, anytime we're gonna move ahead, what are we doing? We're taking the derivative, the dv over dt, to find the acceleration. So let's take a look at my slopes. My slope is very steeply negative, and then my slope becomes zero. So this one is gonna look very similar, but opposite, okay? What are we gonna do if we wanna go the opposite direction is we wanna take the integral of the velocity function with respect to time. And so as we take the area of that, you can see the area is in the positive direction. And so this graph is gonna look like that. And you can see we can go the other way by taking the change of position over change in time to find the velocity function. And that was worth obviously three points, three points for each graph right there. And so you can see, 
As we come back, uh, A1 was worth two points, A2 is worth one more point, uh, B was worth one point, C was worth two points, D was worth six points total, and then three points for E right there. And that was the 2017 AP Physics Calculus Mechanics Exam number two. Have a great day.